Imagine a dystopian fantasy world where demon and fire steeds ride alongside unicorns, proclaiming the gospel of Satan and paving the way for the apocalypse. Welcome to the secret of the magic crystal. Okay, so you don't believe me. You're asking, how can a game like this be horrifying? But I'm telling you, this is a horror game. It's sneaky and lulls you into a false sense of security, even after introducing you to Satan's own children. But hear me out here. So here's the story. Magic crystals fell to Earth on a meteor or something, and your grandfather has determined they work wonders on horses for which the scientific community kicks him out. Who can blame them? He presumably dies of a broken heart, but not before giving some of these crystals and apparently a whole horse farming business to you, his grandkids. Which sounds like a recipe for disaster right there. So now you, as one of the kids, needs to do something. They're never really clear on what. So now you, the player, have the run of the farm, and there are several buildings you can go to. There's the stables, where your horses are born, purchased, and cared for. There's the barn, where you can heal your horses if they get sick, or a sum. Or you can purchase, with precious money, recipes for you to then perform guitar hero-like tasks in order to complete potions that'll give your horses buffs. Then there's the blacksmith, where you similarly waste precious money purchasing blacksmithing recipes that require you to do guitar hero-like tasks in order to earn your horse permanent buffs. Then there's the corral, where you perform guitar hero-like tasks in order to buff your horse's stats. And then there's the well, which serves no purpose other than increasing the number of um, stables that you have in your stable. And finally, the gate, where you can complete missions and send your horse off to the races. Everything costs money. And if you're stupid like me, and you go buying recipes from the blacksmith's shop in the barn without considering the consequences to your wallet, you're going to find yourself in a tough spot pretty quickly. All the buildings cost 300 coins to upgrade initially. Every foal costs 400 coins. And you have to upgrade the well with 100 coins before you can even get a second area in which to buy a foal. So you can't start actually breeding horses until you've spent several hundred coins, and you only start out with 500. And the quests at the gate, well, they only give you 30 coins apiece, and if you win a race, you only get 50 coins. So it can be a little hard to earn your way back up if you're foolish to begin with. You start with a single unicorn. Your unicorn becomes worn out for performing tasks, and you refresh them by giving them some time, just sitting around or taking them back to the stable, where you care for them by rubbing them with sparkles and then forcing them to eat until they are happy because they're worthless if they're unhappy. Then you can go back to doing stuff with them. If you're not careful, your unicorn can get sick, and it can be quite expensive to cure them, considering those cures start at 50 coins and go upwards from there. The thing is, sick horses can still do everything but breed, and they never die, so you don't have to cure them. This is where things start getting creepy. The game doesn't really offer much instruction, so you're left to figure things out for yourself. This means that everything you end up doing to these poor creatures in pursuit of your own ends is really your own doing. The game is not making suggestions. For the most part, when your unicorn leaves the farm, you can't see them. They shamble off to the races or some mundane task, but you can control them yourself in a particular race mode, occasionally against other players. Single player shows something horrifying. These beasts may look like they were designed by 11-year-old girls, but no, they're bots. And these terrifying beasts will beat the ever-living shit out of you. But you will win once and earn your sweet, sweet 50 coins, and then the game will begin its insidious Pavlovian conditioning. The game is brilliant for its attention to money, and you may find yourself working your poor beasts to the bone in servitude. And then, when you have earned enough money, forcing them to breed and give you offspring to expand your labor force. And here we come to the true horror of this game, which is not so much in the corporate dystopia you create, 
but in what the game does to you. In the pursuit of riches and an expanding stable, you can lose part of yourself. The game at once takes your will away from you, and convinces you to perform acts of cruelty without being asked. The beasts themselves are terrifying, but as the game gives you the opportunity to exploit them for gain, it forces you to ask yourself, are they the monsters, or are you?